Hey friends, my name is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I am so excited you're here. This is part three of our craft room refresh series. I'm excited to be filming this with you and we have to unpack a few things. I've had a few questions come in and statements that I want to address. Okay, so we're going to address those first and then we're going to talk about what we're doing next and I'm going to be showing you that process. I may be in totally different clothes when I do it because let's face it, life is busy and there's lots going on. And since I've managed to put myself together today, you know, makeup, hair, decent clothing, I thought I would film the intro to this video, the part that you have to see my face. <laughs> and then we are going to probably on another day do the actual organizing, but it'll all be in this video. So that's how YouTubers film sometimes over the course of multiple days, especially YouTubers that are moms and, you know, busy and those types of things. So let's talk about a few things. Okay. First, some have reached out and said they are so inspired by this series that it, it is inspiring them to clean their own craft spaces, to purge and go through their own stuff. To those people, I want to say thank you so much because it's inspiring me that you're inspired. <laughs> it's making me feel motivated to keep going through this process. And so, um, cause it is a little daunting, right? So I want to kind of reference back to our first video where we talked about like the first priority is picking a small space that feels manageable to you. The second priority is looking at the items and saying, if it's not a yes, it's a no right? Like if it's been sitting in your craft room for three years and you've never touched it, let it go. Somebody else can benefit from that. You can donate to schools, churches, um, other uh, nonprofit organizations, Goodwill, hospice centers. There's so many different places that you can donate to, nursing homes. Um, if you have boxes and boxes of unmailed handmade cards, let's talk about that for a second. This is something else I'm running across with people uh, in messages and different things is handmade cards that are unused. Please either mail those to like Operation Care. Um, there's different military organizations where you mail it and then you leave it blank and then it gets mailed overseas so that soldiers can use those cards to mail back home. Um, nursing homes love you know, imagine if you're in a nursing home and you never hear from anybody how much you would love to get a handmade card and have it sitting on your table or something. So um, nursing homes is a great place to send your cards. So think of different places, organizations that you could possibly send your cards and use those, get them out because that's the whole point of making them, right? The point of making cards is to bring other people joy. So if they're just sitting in your stash in your office, then they're not being used. Um, I also want to address uh, using your products and getting rid of products and what all that looks like. So I've had a few people say like, well, you know, the stamp set, I might use it someday, blah, blah, blah. And I've also had a couple people say like, they've been a little confused about my message of minimalism. So I want to explain all of that. For what we do, first of all, card making is not minimalist. <laughs> a minimalist lifestyle does not include card making, right? Because it's a pretty extensive hobby. So if you're really, really into it, you can do it on a more minimalized version. Like if you just do card kits or something like that, that's fine. I'm not condemning anybody. All I'm saying is that this hobby in general is uses a lot of products. So in my efforts to clean my craft room out, I'm getting rid of products that are retired from Stampin' Up or that I know I'm never going to use anymore. Okay. So I've got drawers with products that are non Stampin' Up that I know I'm never going to use, or they're going to go bad before I ever use them. So what do I do with those? They've got to go. They've just got to go. I know gone are the days of me hoarding all the things. I'm just done. I'm just done doing it. So part of that also is to make room for new. 
So if you've got a craft room that's literally, if you put another stamp set anywhere, the whole craft room is gonna explode or implode because you can't fit anything else. If you want new stuff, get rid of some of the old stuff that you're not using. So that's kind of my thought process is like, I really love buying new stuff out of the newer catalogs when they come out. Now, some of that is because of the nature of my job, right? I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so I need to buy the new stuff to show it to you so that you know what's like every other stamp company. This isn't a Stampin' Up! thing. Every single stamp company sends out new product to all of their people who work for them for those people to make stuff so you see it, so you buy it. I mean, that's what this is, right? So it's not just exclusive to Stampin' Up. Many, many, many stamp companies do the exact same thing. Uh, I have a person I follow on YouTube regularly. I've talked about her. I'm not gonna name her in this video just because I, I wanna be careful. I don't want it to sound like I'm saying anything negative. Um, but I followed her forever and she now is working as a full-time card maker. And so you're seeing in her videos that she's using new product more often for the companies that she's working for. There's nothing wrong with that. It's helping give her money for her household. It's helping her earn a living and she's just getting to do something she absolutely loves while doing it. So I think that's beautiful. I think that's a beautiful thing. So all that being said, we can only fit so many things, right, in a space. And for me, as I've talked about in the previous videos, a clean, organized space is very soothing to me. It's very comforting to me. So for me, that's why I'm trying to get rid of things and maybe move things around and reduce the amount of stuff that I am visually looking at. So Another question or comment that came up was about my paper cutter. So I'm gonna show you guys this. So this paper cutter here, somebody was concerned about it being too low to the ground for cutting and it being too heavy to move and hard on our backs. Um, it is heavy, uh, it's about 40 pounds. It was, we moved it, I moved it and actually it being lower is easier and i'm going to show you why really quick here see if i can show you let's see i'm gonna to have to maneuver the camera angle just a little uh maybe maybe not i've got it on a tripod so bear with me here okay so with it being down low it actually makes it easier to pull this handle down and push on top of it. When it's higher, you're having to pull it down. Where with here, now I can just kind of up on my tippy toes and push. And somebody made the comment about us using this excessively and that um, it would be hard on us for it to be in this position. We really don't use this excessively. If I'm being honest, it gets used about three times a year. Uh, in those three times per year, it gets a lot of use, but that's all it's being used is three times a year. So you might think like, well, then is it really worth it to have, whoops, I'm tilting you guys all over the place. Is it really worth it to have this piece of equipment? You're only using it three times a year? Yes, the answer is yes for me. Um, maybe it would be a no for you, but for me it's a yes because uh, even though it's only three times a year, it gets a lot of use in that time. So uh, that was a question that came up. Some comments and questions came up about this area over here and things being up really high. I have a step stool, that's not a big deal. Um, and I also have a husband that's six foot five, so not an issue. Um, down below is my grandfather's hutch. We've talked about that. The big hutch that was here before got donated to the church and the church is going to be giving it away in their um, help for the holidays program. So uh, all good things, all good things are happening here. I got a couple of messages about my desk that there's these desks that you can buy that move up and down and it's the whole top. I know about those desks. I was not interested in purchasing one of those and spending the money 
I don't need one that goes up and down. I just need one that's always up because I can sit, I have a drafting chair. So the drafting chair sits at a high level. So it's very easy for me to just sit at that chair and it's very comfortable. It's been working wonderfully. I'm very happy with the way things are set up. So I hope that eases everybody's concerns about those items. Um, I do, as of the time of filming this video, I have a few mystery boxes left. Those have been selling quickly. Uh, they are stuffed full of lots of goodies. So if you're interested in the mystery boxes, I'll link them below because there's still a few left. Um, but they may not even be there by the time this video airs. So you're going to just have to click the link and see if they're still there. Um, okay, so let's talk about what we're going to be going through first. Uh, this is my next small spot that feels manageable to me. So we're going to put this down here. All of these boxes down here, hopefully you can see these. These are from Ikea and they're labeled well. I never touch them. Never. Literally never. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all of these we're going to make decisions if we want to keep stuff or if we want to get rid of it. And then we're going to decide what's going to go down here. Okay. Cause this is ridiculous. Like I've got this whole thing here is just look at that. It's just jammed full of stuff, but I don't really know like what, and I've got more stuff down here here, here. So we're going to go through all of this stuff down here um, and make decisions about what we want to do. Now, we can go through it. You know, if this, here's what I want to encourage you. If this feels too overwhelming to you, doing this whole thing, do one box. Okay, this is my encouragement to you. Don't look at a space and decide, can't do it too much. Look at a space and think, how could I pare that down to make it feel less overwhelming to me and more manageable? Because that's what I'm having to do. So maybe I start this process and I go, this is too overwhelming. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to do one box today. Then that's what I'll do. I'm not trying to win a race. I'm trying to do something that's going to make me feel better in the long run and make things feel more manageable. So let's just start with this box. We're just going to grab a box and get started. Ooh. Okay. So this box is named Pretty Packaging which there's nothing wrong with. And I got these a hundred years ago at a place called Daiso. In fact, I got it while I was on a Stampin' Up! trip. So these close like this. They're little containers. And they close like this, but they don't stay closed. And they're very flimsy. So you would have to wrap them with something like a belly band. They're super cute. I have no current immediate use for them. I have them in multiple sizes. So I've got a small, kind of a medium, and a larger size. And then I also have these little boxes that have like a little thing that pops on the top. And then this is where we come to problems because this is what happens. Okay, let me take you through what I'm thinking right now. I'm like, okay, Wendy, well, you haven't used these because you forgot they were in here. But wouldn't these be cute to make some holiday goodies for, put them in these containers and give them away to people? So do you really want to get rid of all of this? I'm just walking you through what's happening in my brain right now. You know, if you get rid of all of this, you, you might not ever find these again. And then you're going to wish that you would have kept them and used them. 
but it's been years. They've been in this box for years. No lie. So what do I do? So here's what I think I'm going to do. And I'm coming up with this literally as we're sitting here. Um, there's only five of these little containers in here. I have a man that lives next door to me, Mr. Allison. You may have heard me talk about him. Um, I make him dinner every Wednesday. I need to go containers all the time for different stuff. There's only five of these. They're throwaway and they have a lid that pops on. I'm going to take these and put them in my house in Mr. Allison's to go container box so that if I have like a little side dish that needs to go in a container, I can put it in these. These are going to go to use, but they're not going to go to use in here. So I'm going to take them in the house. Okay. That takes care of that. These there's, there's a ton of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, most of them in a giveaway and I'm just going to take two or three and I'm going to put them in my house in my baking cupboard because the truth is I'm probably never going to bake enough stuff to make, to fill these at one time. So I'm having a moment here because I'm thinking to myself, you know, I could use these for the spring paper party and fill them with treats and wrap them. But if I'm going to do that, then I need to move them and put them in a place and label them spring paper party. So what I do before my paper parties, uh, my retreats is I start I, I get a bin and I start collecting stuff that I think I'll use for the paper party. So if I think I'm going to use these and fill them with treats and make a cute thing to go around them, which is fine, that's not a bad thing, but I need to put them in a location I re where I will remember to use them. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm going to do. And these are a good size. So these I'm going to keep. I'm going to get rid of these. I'm just going to let them go. If at some point I need packages like these, again, I will buy them. I have not used them in years. I'm going to let them go. So I feel like this is a good compromise. <sighs> this is hard. Just so you guys know, this is hard. It's hard to do. So it's okay if it's hard, but we can do hard things. I keep thinking, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> okay, so that's that. So this is empty. The next one is heavy and it's been sitting here so long it has a dust ring. Oh, and it's full of mason jars and candles. This is crazy, people. Okay, so <sighs> mason jars and candles. I'm going to take these and put them with my canning supplies. These candles. What am I doing? What is happening? I, did, I literally do not remember buying these. So I've got all these mason jars. Different sizes. These candles. And then there's these hoop things and they go around the mason jar and make it like a handle. So I'm assuming in my head at some point I was going to do some project with these. All of this is going. I'm getting rid of these. The mason jars are going to go with my canning stuff and the candles. I don't know. Maybe donate them, I guess. I don't know. I Why keep, I'm not keeping them. Gone. Gone. Okay, that one was easier. That was less hard on me because I get to keep my jars and yeah, that was, that was less difficult. All right. So there's box number two. All right. This one is labeled Christmas cards and it has Christmas cards in it. Okay. From last year, but they're beautiful. And I'll use them. And there's even some really beautiful Christmas stamps in here. 
and I did use this last year. I got it out and I used it to send Christmas cards. So I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna keep my Christmas cards because I use them. So that I know for sure. I know for sure I'll use them. So we'll set this aside. Next box. This one's gonna be tough. This is planner, planner stuff. Well, I've made a, a decision to go very minimalistic with my planner. Ooh, this is a find, a Minnie Mouse ruler. That's gonna go right up onto my tools. So, I've got a whole bag here full of what I imagine, yep, stickers, planner stickers. So I'm gonna probably put this on my website to sell. Just miscellaneous planner supplies, I'm gonna sell all of it. So if you're interested in planner supplies, check it out. Um, I've also got multiple, like Erin Condren zipper bag. Um, yeah, multiple different fronts and backs. I even have a Wonder Woman one. I'm pretty sure, I feel like Katina got this for me. So as long as it doesn't have my name on it, I'll, I'll, I have one with flamingos that has my name on it. So I probably won't do this one. But the rest of them, yeah, I'm gonna put all of this in just one big, I'll take a photo of everything together and I'll probably put it in one big thing that's like planner stuff and you guys, somebody can purchase it. So. It may not be up on my website by the time you're watching this video. So if you're watching and you're like, it's not there, that's why. And I'm not gonna give up the bags. Those I'm keeping. So, uh, but the rest going on my, going on the site. I am gonna keep this. I forgot I made this. It's a password thing and it's, I laminated it so it's dry erase. So I'm gonna stick this in my actual planner. So that's kind of fun that I found that. And I've got like Erin Condren bookmarks, a whole pack here of Erin Condren, stick it and snap. So, so whoever buys this will love it. All right, I might just list anything that I don't keep on my site. So this thing, planner stuff, gone. I'm not, I'm not keeping a tote with planner stuff. I never touch it. Okay, this box is labeled gifts and goodies. Whew. It's a little stinky. What do we got? We've got treat tubes. Now see, I could have used these for Halloween. But they're in this box, hidden away. So I don't use them. This is the problem. I've got one, two, three boxes of those. This is, this will be hard for me to get rid of. Okay, I've got multiples of these. These are like um, displays. So you put this thing, these are from Ikea. You put this thing on the bottom and then you can print stuff to put inside and it's a display. These are gonna be hard for me to let go of because in my head, if I ever hold events in person anymore, I will want stuff like this. However, instead of hoarding them, I'm going to reach out to my team for those that hold in-person events and see if any of them can use these. Because obviously they've been sitting in here for how long and not been touched, okay? So those are gonna go. Whole, bat, whole pack of Halloween bags, never touched. Go, go, gone. Okay, these stink. These are from Dollar Store, I think, and they look like little um, lattes and they're candles. They, they're supposed to smell like um, coffee, but they stink at this point. I mean, they do still smell like coffee, but whew. So, yeah, I think I'm just gonna, I don't know, get rid of those. 
And then look, there's a little Christmas tag in the bottom of here that I made. You guys remember this? He's so cute. So he can go in my Christmas, my Christmas bin because I might use him. All right, so that's gifts and goodies emptied. And the treat tubes, I don't know yet how I feel about these. <laughs> so I'm just gonna set them aside because I just don't know yet how I feel about them. If I'm gonna keep them or discard them. I probably should just discard them. Okay, next up, this one's not labeled. Here's a whole bunch of blenders, blending pins. This is a weird box, but I'm keeping it because I need it. It is all of the empty plastic tote things for dyes. Because when I get dyes from Stampin' Up, I take them out of these and I put them on a magnet board. So I keep these so that when I take them off the magnet board, I can put them back in here. Actually, Miss Deborah does that. She puts them back in these and then I am able to sell them or do whatever. So this actually is very useful. Gets used regularly, putting the lid back on, keeping it. Okay, during COVID, um, we almost ran out of white cardstock. Stampin' Up did. It was a mess. We had to change manufacturers, blah, blah, blah. Nina White Cardstock, which is just another company's white cardstock, was selling quickly as well. So I purchased a pack of Nina White Cardstock, which is this. But it's just been sitting here and hasn't been used. So I probably either need to use it or donate it or do something with it. So there's that. Never really had to use it, but there it sits. Okay, these are gifts from my 40th birthday, a sign that my best friend made me, another sign that she got, and I've got a little tote in another area that has my 40th birthday stuff, so I'm gonna put this there for now until we get to that spot. <laughs> I know, you're like, okay, you're crazy, but for now, I, I don't know what to do with that yet. There's a lot of sentimental attachment to that for me. So I'm just gonna set it with the rest of my 40th birthday stuff and we'll address it later. And that's what this is all about. If it's too hard for you to deal with in the moment, don't, just don't. Okay, so let's see what's in this. Okay. Okay, so in this we have old Stampin' Up colors, ink colors. And you might be thinking, why keep those? I'm gonna keep them and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm keeping them because Stampin' Up! every five-ish years does a color refresh. And when they do that, sometimes they bring back old colors. So rather than have to purchase the ink pad again, I would rather just use the ink pad I already have in my stash and re-ink it. So I've got, in this tote, I have retired re-inkers and ink pads, I'm gonna keep it. It's not useful per se at this moment, but it's not something I wanna get rid of either. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we'll put that here at the back and then we'll put my plastic uh, die cut holders on top of that and that takes care of that. All right. Let's move you down. And now we've got this one that is, okay, this one is labeled party games and event items. So in here I have my bingo slips. When I do bingos, I have raffle tickets and I have my bingo cards. I probably don't need this giant bin for that, but it's what I have and why relabel it? I'm gonna keep this because I do use this. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it down here and then I